Web3 is the biggest technological shift that will ever occur in our lifetime. Let's talk about it. So to explain Web3, I should first explain what Web 1.0 and what Web 2.0 is first. And as we go through them, think of each web as the internet throughout a period of time. Starting off with Web 1.0, it's really referred to as the read-only web, where people are, of course, reading rather than writing. Think of it as like a consumer's haven. Not much interaction or creation. The content that was available would be from a very few amount of people, um, and the masses would consume it. So a very small amount of creators and a huge amount of people consuming. Uh, so it's very static in the sense that people only consumed instead of created. That's why it's called read-only. And they say that Web 1.0 lasted right around the beginning of the 90s, kind of the end of the 80s, all the way down to right around 2005. Now on to Web 2.0, where the average users are now content creators. Not only does that include YouTube creators like I, but also the stuff that you guys post as well. That includes Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, pretty much, you can think of Web 2.0 as pretty much more of the interactive uh, and collaborative version of 1.0, where you know us average users are now creating. So you guys commenting down below and liking the video also counts. So obviously, where it seems like us users have a lot more control now, it's all really kind of a facade. Big companies such as Google, Facebook, Twitter, you know, etc., all have the power, technically, since we rely on their platforms to create and share our content. Then, of course, as a result, you know, giving up our personal information and data to be a part of such platforms. Quite obviously, we've been in Web 2.0 for quite some time, uh, ever since, you could almost say the start of, you know, YouTube back in 2006. Um, but, of course, it's all really hazy. There is no uh, specific time period when Web 2.0 started and when it ended, or Web 1.0 when it started and when it ended. But they all kind of overlap with each other. There is no exact date for when one started and when one, when one ended. And Web 2.0 can also be referred to as the read and write only of the web. Now, of course, onto Web 3, which you all came here for. Web 3 is essentially the decentralized web, where the power that was once held by these corporations is being distributed to everybody, including you and I. Uh, so the power essentially is transferred to the people. This, of course, includes decentralization. So blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to be the best examples of this. So being able to use these decentralized platforms without needing to trust anyone or any one entity. And trust, of course, isn't needed because of the consensus protocols that exist on these blockchains that are all hard-coded. So the only way that they can be changed if an overwhelming majority of people agree to change it. It's pretty much the basics of blockchain. So obviously decentralization is gonna be one of the keys to Web3. But not only that, uh, transferring of wealth, transferring of your money is gonna be the other very important aspect of it. So of course, right now we rely on banks like Chase uh, and payment transfer services like PayPal to hold and transfer our wealth. Well, Web3 gives that back to the user, uh, mainly because banks are replaced with wallets that are only accessible by private keys that you, know, you would own, and payment transfer services are replaced with cryptocurrencies on blockchains. So of course, rather than being restricted by your location and the information that you're willing to provide, uh, that is no longer the case with cryptocurrencies since in practice they're permissionless, instant, and global. And the most recent innovation within this field was decentralized finance where essentially uh, mainly on platforms like Ethereum or where you could really use uh, what are called smart contracts, you're given the ability to lend and borrow wealth in the form of cryptocurrencies. So for people in first world countries like the United States, it probably doesn't make too much of a difference since you can just walk down to your local bank and they'll you know, lend and borrow stuff for you. Uh, however, in third world countries or places where you know, they can't afford to, or maybe for people who just don't wanna give up their information, they don't need to submit their information anymore. They don't need to be in a certain geographical location uh, to be able to lend their wealth or borrow it for whatever reason. So in a nutshell, Web3 is essentially giving power back to the people. And rather than read and write like Web2.0 is, Web3 can be considered executable. So if you ask me, Web3 started right around 2009, uh, obviously very, very slightly when Bitcoin was invented. So ever since then, we've technically been in the starting stages of Web3. I would probably say that we're still in Web2.0, but obviously, like I said, there isn't a a hard stop and end. You know, there isn't a hard beginning and ending for when these different shifts, uh, you know, the internet begin and end. So as far as I'm concerned, ever since 2009, we've been making that transition very slowly. But given this past year just happened, 2020, it uh, just so happened to really speed up the uh, innovation of Web3, mainly just because of all the crazy stuff that's been happening, you know, all within the world, our government, the people. Uh, we saw a lot of censorship going on, you know, of course, with these companies censoring people on the internet and showing that we need some sort of decentralization. The people need some sort of power back because if not, things 
probably won't end well. And for the most part, again, if you live in the States, you probably won't realize the importance of Web3 until it's too late. Whereas people in other uh, third world countries or places where you know, they just don't have the luxury of not needing to know what's going on in the world, um, they're going to be feeling it a lot more than we are. And they'll be able to utilize this technology a lot more than we are. Uh, the great thing is that Web3, again, is really already taking place um, quite impressively, actually. You know, back in 2017, when crypto was really booming um, and, you know, Ethereum, pretty much what's being considered as, you know, the, uh, the world Internet uh, was just kind of coming up. There wasn't too much uh, built, you know, in that space. However, now, you know, only three years later, or technically four years later, now it's 2021, uh, you know, centralized finance is here. Um, people are able to essentially, you know, use the blockchain as their bank, which is pretty crazy to, to think. But again, you know, for the most part, most people will not realize the importance of Web3 until it is too late. So hats off to you for being one of the few. I also wanted to mention the Web3 Foundation. Uh, these guys pretty much uh, fund open source research and development teams who are helping and build the foundation for Web3. Two of their main projects are actually Polkadot and Kusama. Polkadot, of course, being one of the most known cryptocurrencies in this case, and as of the making of this video, top four in terms of market cap. Now, a lot of people are touting it as the Ethereum killer. It could potentially be, assuming that it is faster, uh, more open source, and reliable than, than Ethereum. But I think the point is, at the end of the day, that we all build towards this decentralized future, whether it be on Ethereum, whether it be on Polkadot, whether it be on any other coin. Uh, the importance is that the power comes back to the people and that we're able to make you know, our own decisions essentially finally without having the intrusion of Uncle Sam. Now, with all that being said, Web3 is still in its early stages, although it does seem like it's pretty advanced and has been for quite some time. I am 100% expecting you know, a lot of this video to either be um, not obsolete, but just lacking information because of how much more new things will come out in the near future. And to me, that's one of the most exciting things about Web3 and this relatively new technology blockchain uh, and how it's really going to impact everyone's future. So with that being said, I want you guys to let me know down in the comments, what do you think is the most important within Web3? Is it decentralization? Is it the transferring of wealth? Uh, is it anything else that you might think might be coming up? Let me know down below. I'll also leave all the articles that I got most of my information from down below as well. If you want to do some reading on your own, great stuff to learn about down there. And of course, if you do want to learn more about crypto and anything related to it, Go ahead and subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed what I'm telling y'all. And with that being said, I'm out. I'll see you guys in Web 4. Peace.